Alpha and Omega sucks, but does it suck as much as you think it does? Let's find out. Ever since me and Noah watched Tentacolino, I've been desperate to feel some kind of emotion. I know I said there wasn't going to be any more reviews, but when I said that I meant any more reviews with the crew, because um, I would be, you know, traveling the country, which I still am. So instead, we're going to be, be, be talking about some of my older reviews. And we're going to start with the first one that we ever did on the team. And that one was... Now that's a moon I don't want to howl to. <laughs> Before I explain this cinematic masterpiece, I need to take you back to the beginning of time. If you aren't up to speed with the movie, then I'm so sorry. <sighs> Allow me to recap it in the a satirical way. So basically, there's this head-ass Omega wolf named Justin Long who wants to get it on with this alpha wolf named Hayden Panettiere, and she doesn't like him that way because he's a peasant. He's, he's a peasant. As her big stank dick daddy Danny Glover explains to him. Alphas and Omegas can't make SEXUAL INTERCOURSE! No! An entire season of winter passes, and by that I mean 10 seconds. Our main man is hanging out with the boys when he gets his eyes set on Alpha Girl as she demonstrates her alphaness. She don't need no man. Hardcore parkour! Hardcore parkour! Hardcore fucking parkour! Ah! But some other furries want some food and start killing each other until Justin Long, being the funny guy, solves the violence in the only way he knows how. I'll we'll stop this violence the only way I know how! With more violence! The other packs are starving because caribou are rare and now Danny Glover has to sell his badass daughter off to Dennis Hopper's godly chad of a son, Garth. He's like Marth, but with a G. A big G. Meanwhile, her mom never took proper therapy and just wants to kill all men. If Garth gets out of line, go for the throat and don't let go until the body stops shaking. But that's unimportant despite how funny it is. By the way, did I mention that Alpha Girl has a really cute sister named Lily? Make me laugh. What am I? Help, I'm a turtle and I can't get up! Anyone who doesn't like her is wrong, and so is everything they believe. Anyway, Garth impresses Alpha Girl by being Garth because that's what Garth does. Unfortunately, Justin Long wants to feel long, so he. Humphrey! Oh. Right on that ass, 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 ass. Sadder even still, the great Garth actually has one major flaw. I know you're devastated by that shocking plot twist, but it's true. The one thing Garth can't do is appear in millions of sequels to follow. Oh, and also. <laughs> You couldn't sing if your life depended on it. So bad in the not sexy way that Alpha Girl, her name's Kate by the way, darts out faster than Sonic when Amy enters the room. Then she and Humphrey get tranquilized and get shipped off to, I don't know. Idaho? Idaho? And then have to make it back before Captain America Civil War gets a furry remake with the help of two bird, funny bird characters because the funny guy was bad at his job. Oh no, 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 no! You just got stuck! Meanwhile, Lily and Garth decide to hook up and steal your attention. Now that we've got the basics of this historic gem down, let's discuss the criticisms that everyone loves to make and my own personal thoughts. A story of two lovers wanting to get it on despite social boundaries is incredibly generic now. But not this one. Entirely. First of all, the true magic of this concept shines through Garth and Lily's contributions. They aren't the main characters, and that's why they're better. Or rather, it's because they're together to actually grow as characters. Garth's Garthness brings Lily out of her turtle shell, and Lily's sincerity brings the final push of Garthiness out for Garth so he can howl now. And now nobody can resist the Garthness, the extreme amount of thunderous Chadcock that is Garth. Pretty ironic that the side characters do a better Romeo and Juliet story than the actual Romeo and Juliet of the story. The typical love story of characters who aren't supposed to be there and one of them's funny and the other's serious and it has 
comic relief because of course and they have to work together despite not getting along it's a really really overdone story but who's the villain the answer may surprise you the second thing is this is an animated animal movie where humans directly affect the plot for the worse but can you honestly name a single character who classifies as a v Who is the true villain of Alpha and Omega? <laughs> yes, humans capture our leads and ship them away, which forces them to get back in time. However, they're not framed as evil. In fact, they actually want to boost the numbers of the Animal Kingdom in Idaho. Uh, you were, uh, relocated to, um... <laughs> Which is a refreshing and realistic move in a movie where humans disrupt the environment. And about Dennis Hopper's character, if we have to, we'll fight for the valley. Don't really ask me. Don't look at me. Tony's probably the closest thing to a villain this movie offers, but he just wants to save his pack that's starving. And his friend Winston, oh, he wants to save Winston's pack too. His method of forcing their children to be together and then freaking out when they don't love each other is of course shitty this is madness this is sparta but aside from that he doesn't really do anything deliberately evil nor does he get punished or killed afterwards he's just there happy with everyone else in the titular dance ending scene because every movie has that now and he, so because of that, he doesn't technically count as a villain. A villain in a romantic movie like this usually ends up being the loveless groom. You know, the person that usually the girl character is supposed to be with. See our Romeo and Juliet sealed with a kiss review. I'm not married yet. <laughs> but as we've established by now, Garth is actually a real cool dude bro. Arguably more sympathetic than the so-called hero of the movie. That also is because some of Humphrey's actions are morally reprehensible, like the time that he was supposed to go and pee away from Kate and then he deliberately decides to stall so that now the trailer leaves without them and they have to go on and find a train. Or how when he first meets Garth without knowing anything about the guy, he starts shitting all over him and farting in his face, stuffing dirt, and be assuming him to be a complete prick. But of course, despite my compliments, this is by no means a perfect movie. Despite changing, a lo despite changing a lot since where I began, there are still some criticisms I stand by. This movie has the subtlety of Christian propaganda. You just want to ensnare them in your primitive superstition. What I want is for them to make their own choice. <laughs> Lily needs to get out of her shell, you know, because her comedic shtick as an Omega is being a turtle. Get it? Fucking idiot. I, I know it might take a, a really high amount of IQ to understand this amazing joke, but the joke is that she's shy and likes to hide in her shell like a turtle. Just blew your mind right there. Also, the movie constantly forces Caden Humphrey in your face with scenes where a librarian is dancing with a trucker and when Humphrey accidentally run, rolls into her while they're sleeping. Man, I, I wonder if they're gonna fuck by the end of this incredibly subtle experience. Trust me, this movie's so deep, you guys. The jokes aren't funny, it's a 2012 animated kids movie. That's to be expected. Now that's a moon I don't wanna howl to. <laughs> One thing I actually don't like is the style that they used for the characters. It looks uninteresting as hell, and I bring this up because I've seen what it could have been. But there's one more thing that's kinda bad about Alpha and Omega. It goes as you'd expect, Humphrey's butt hurt about Kate marrying Garth the Great so he leaves. Yeah, I totally buy that. And then Kate can't marry Garth because he's Garth and Lily's the only one who deserves the greatness that is Garth. This erupts in probably the shortest war ever because a very large pack of rare caribou come charging in. Humphrey comes back, which is the biggest plot twist ever and stops the stampede and then with by doing the whole log riding thing that he was doing in the beginning then the movie tries to trick you into thinking Kate's dead because apparently they never caught on to the fact that nobody gives a shit we've talked about this there's no need to drag on would you believe me if i told you 
that Kate was actually dead. Would you believe me if I told you that this movie ended tragically? Tragically? Would you believe me if I told you that this was where the movie ended? <laughs> <laughs> if you think that you've never watched a movie before. So yeah, the, she gets back up and they get together and everyone's happy. The end. Pretty man is She's all right with me. So yeah, despite being flawed, I don't actually think Alpha and Omega is as bad as people seem to think it is. The movie closes with everyone being happy and dancing at FurCon 2010 not knowing that, that with seven more sequels, it would become one of the most hated movie franchises of all time. And since all of them have now been made, I guess it's time for me to finally address that. Yeah, just kidding, we're never doing that. But at the end of the day, you gotta remember that this is just my opinion. I'm not trying to force anyone into believing something else. Unlike some people, <coughs> I just wanted to express my new thoughts on an old movie and wanted to explain how on surface level it is your average dumb fuck animated movie about cartoon wolves or about cartoon characters wanting to get together but not because social boundaries. But if you look at it deeper, it's still that, but it's actually not as bad as you think. I wanted to show how much I've, my views have changed and I wanted to show that I care more about I actually do care about making my videos look good, not just making stupid jokes because lol, XD, funny thing happened. But hey, maybe like with me revisiting my old videos, then I'm gonna get a good movie some- Wait, what was the next movie I reviewed after- <laughs>